Flathead Soft Plastic Basics. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. Today I'm with my good mate Laurie. G'day. He's come down for the weekend. And we're going to go out for a fish on the lake for Flathead. And we're going to be teaching you just some simple keys to get you catching Flathead. If you're in the beginning of your journey fishing for Flathead, this video will really help you. If you haven't liked and subscribed, please do that and hit the notification bell. Let's get started with today's video. So we have a northeast wind today, and really when you're doing plastics, the wind plays a big part. We really want to get out of the strong wind. Yeah. So we're coming up on the side of the lake to escape the wind, and the wind's actually going to push us away from the shore out into the middle of the lake. We really want to fish the areas close to the shore, the little drop-offs. We're not fishing, aiming to fish in deep water. And I'm going to stop the boat in just a second, really close to shore here. And this wind's going to pick us up like a sailing boat, Loz. It's going to push us pretty quick. Um, and we're going to be casting with the wind, not into the wind. So I'm just going to turn this engine off and we're ready to go, aren't we, mate? Okay, there's a couple of nice light patches of sand over there, but that might be a little hard. I might give it one throw there, no, but no, yeah. We've got to be quick, Loz. We've got to be thrown over there. Okay, so. The wind's going to blow us a mile away. I'm ready to roll here. I've got this one hooked up, rigged up, ready to go. So essentially, Laurie and I, we're going to be flicking our plastics out as we drift along and we will talk about one of the key points we'll talk about today is how to retrieve your soft plastic what sort of action you employ when you're using the soft plastic but the first thing we'd like to talk about while we're just starting our session is okay so you want to go fishing for flathead so where do you go fishing for flathead um, if you're in your local lake or river or harbour, well essentially flathead live on, on a sandy bottom. They're a light brown, a light brown to dark brown in colour, and they camouflage themselves in the sand. They kind of semi-bury, and they wait for little fish and things to swim past, and they're an ambush predator. So wherever you're thinking of going fishing, you need to find those areas where you know there's a sand bottom. Now, if you go to a particular waterway, I mean, if the water is relatively clear you can tell where the sand is and where the rocks and the weed are because the areas I'll just watch out for you Laurie the areas where the sand are when you look at the water the water is more of a lighter color and then when you've got your darker patches that's where you've got rocks and weeds so you want to be aiming for fishing on the sand but also a great place to fish is along the edges of those weedy and rocky areas However, the main thing is you need to be fishing on sand, not on top of rocks and not on top of weed. Correct. So you can see we're pretty close to shore and it's relatively shallow. In fact, the end of these wharves here is super shallow. So we're really just fishing the area where the, it transitions from the shallow water into the deeper water. And the bottom here is mainly kind of muddy, sandy, sandy bottom. It's usually best to cast with the wind because when you're fishing into the wind like this, you've got the drag of the boat being pulled by the wind, which makes it a little bit harder with your soft plastic sinking. It's almost like you're really trolling it, but um, cause you want it to go down and hit the bottom where the flathead are. So I'm just gonna let that go a little bit slack so I can let that get down near the bottom. Give it a couple of little twitches, wind up the slack. But I actually think, cause that wind is taking us quite Pulling is pretty quick. Yeah, we're moving pretty quick, aren't we, Laurie? Mm-hmm. Which is not See, a bad thing sometimes, depending on how ferocious they want to bite. Yeah. However, you'll notice how I'm flicking here. A couple yeah. of little short flicks like that. You let the thing sink to the bottom and then flick, flick. Not yank! Because we're moving pretty fast anyway. So you don't want to pull it 10, 15 feet each time. Just Couple of little flicks. Just like that. You keep an eye on the braid. That's tip number one, tip number two. If you go harder, it's a lot harder to keep an eye on what's happening at the other end of the line. You really want to know what's happening with that lure all the time. So flick, flick, watch the line. I'm keeping my rod out of his way. <laughs> I don't want to get in his way. Like so. But you know, if you were land-based, doing what we're doing, you could fish exactly the same spot 
you just walk out onto the sandbar here up to your thighs and flick and you'd be fishing in the same area, exactly the same area as we are. We might be in a boat, but you could fish all of these areas very easily from the shore. Now we're already blowing away quite quickly, so I'm going to just reposition the boat back over closer to the shore. Okay, Rog, where you go. Okay, so now I'm just going to um, I'm just going to idle over. I don't like to burn over at 100 miles an hour. I just want to sneak sneak into the fish zone quietly, just just nice and quietly head in there. I'm going to go into it where it's fairly shallow. So. Loz are where you and I'll be casting, it's only going to be like a metre or so deep. Yeah, that's okay. They, that's where they like to hide. And, and then we'll gradually w um, drift over the edge of that. Yep. They like to warm themselves in the sun and go out and hunt then, so one metre's fine. Notice, notice these rods that we're using, they're very whippy, very noodly, very good for plastic fishing. You don't want a stiff pool cue type rod. They just don't work for this type of fishing. Usually seven foot rods. Or thereabouts. I'm probably going to err on the so on the shallow side here, Laurie. Yep. I think. Okay, yeah. we seem to be out of the wind here. So I've just good. put it into neutral. I'm just letting the momentum come out of the boat. Sometimes I like to just put it in, in reverse just for a second, just to stop that momentum yep. a little bit. So you say this is all sand here? Oh, well, you can see the bottom right there, Laurie. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So now we are really going to be casting yeah, on the other side of the boat. Yep. We're going to be casting out off the drop-off over here. Okay. Because right here, you could jump in and touch the bottom you pretty much. You can see that. All right. I reckon we're flicking, out, we're flicking our lines out over the edge. So I'm casting with the wind. It always helps much more. You can get better distance casting with the wind. And when you're fishing with soft plastics, the more distance, the better because essentially you just cover more ground. And the more ground that you cover with your lure, the more likelihood you are of catching a fish. Now my soft plastics hit the water and I'm not doing anything yet because I'm waiting for it to hit the bottom. And it just hit the bottom then, so I'm gonna give it a couple of twitches, lift it up off the bottom, and now I'm gonna wait again while it swims back down to the bottom. I can tell when it hits the bottom because my line just relaxes. As Soon as it hits the bottom, your line just goes, oh, like that. And nearly all of the bites that you get are while you're waiting for your plastic to hit the bottom. It's swimming down like this and very often it's like woof. The fish grab a hold of it. Okay, now I'm on the bottom. So we're just gently bouncing our plastics back towards the boat. And we don't, no one, when you do this type of fishing, you don't really know where the flathead are. You've just got to um, cast in different spots until you find them. And very often you'll get multiple fish in one spot. That's true. I might hop up on here. Oh, it's a dog over there. Dog on. Sometimes it takes a while for the plastic to hit the bottom, especially when you're using a pretty light jig head. I've just taken this um, plastic off. It's a squidgy uh, wriggle tail and the colour is wasabi. I've caught flathead on this colour before, but I went out for a quick fish this morning with Loza and we caught a few flathead and I wasn't using this particular plastic, I was using a different one um, and I caught a few fish on that, so I'm going to take this one off and go back to what I was using this morning and uh, which is really, really just replicates a baby mullet. This is, uh, you'll be able to have a look at this one. It's only a very tiny little plastic. It's grey on top and it's white underneath. Like, you know, many fish have a white belly and then they've got kind of like a bluey gray on top. And it's only a really small one. The biggest flathead I've caught on this particular lure was 88 centimeters, which is a respectable fish. I've caught heaps of brim, I've caught snapper. I've caught a lot of different fish on this particular plastic. So I'm gonna put the jig head in now. I'm just gonna put the hook in pull it through and feed that on. So there is my uh, lure on the jig head. It's just a size 1.0. We'll need to move the boat again in a second, Laurie. I'm just yep. gonna have a couple of quick flicks here. 
flick out there. But um, we are drifting a little bit. We're drifting pretty quick. Might try back over where we got the other three this morning, Rog. Yeah, I think um, over to that other spot, we might give that a go. On the point? Oh, just over there, yeah. Yep. So we've only been in this particular little spot for about 10 minutes, having a few flicks. We ha neither Laurie or I have had a bite. So you don't just continue to persevere in the one spot, keep casting in the same location if you're not getting any bites. The same thing would apply if you were fishing from the shore. You would fish in a spot and then you'd walk along 10 metres. You have a few casts, then walk along 10 metres and just work your way along the shoreline. So we're going to uh, just move the boat uh, to another spot near the shore and have a few flicks there. So we are going to head around out there. Now fortunately the wind's not too strong because we're fairly exposed out here where we are but we're going to end up drifting towards the shore which we don't mind. We're happy to drift into, all the way into the shore and just fish that zone all the way into the shore. So another tip with flatty fishing, flat, flathead are a bottom dweller. They sit on the bottom on the sand. Half the time they're buried. Half the time they're just sitting there. They're just waiting for something to swim past that they can ambush and come up and grab. So this is why we don't throw the lure out and just sit there and wait and wait and wait like, as you would if you were bottom fishing with bait. So this is why we cast out, let it sink, bounce it, bounce it a couple of feet, wait a second, bounce it a few more feet, wait a second. We're waiting to find, we're gonna bounce it right and cross in front of the flathead's mouth and it'll come up and grab it when it bounces past. That's the idea of plastic fishing. Totally different to bottom, bottom, bottom bash fishing, bait fishing. Um, yeah, we're just trying to trick them, trick them into biting our lures. So this is the method. Different style of fishing, a lot cleaner. There's no bait, there's no mess. Clean hands, clean clothes. Well, sort of, <laughs> okay. Just a little flick, and hopefully I'll excite something enough to get a reaction before too long. I'm going to catch one any minute now, Laurie. Now, we're not actually, it's difficult for us, for us to show on camera exactly where we're casting, but that doesn't really matter because we are not casting in one particular spot. We're just working different parts around the boat. We're just trying to cover ground. So it's not like you need to actually see where we're casting. We're just trying to get the best distance we can with the plastic so that as we bump it across the bottom on the way in, we're covering the largest amount of ground. So we like to, with these light soft plastic rods which are rated one to three kilos, they've got a nice whippy tip so that when you cast you can really flick that light plastic and you, and you know you really want to employ that, that flick so that you can get some lovely distance with your cast. Something just hit that on the surface, do you know? Probably a tailor. Something whacked it. Yeah, something else whacked it. Man, okay. something else is having a go. That's weird. Okay. Hopefully I still have some plastic left because sometimes yeah. they, ch they chop them in half. Cut it in half, yeah. I mean, all I could feel then was a couple of whack, bang, bang. whack, whack like that. that Definitely so, speaks um, of Taylor, doesn't it? I'm thinking I'm going to wind it in because I'm not confident that I've got my whole plastic on the end. Uh, oh no, I do, thankfully. So, because I wouldn't want to have it out there and not have the whole thing. I don't know what that was, but something was um, whacking it as soon as it hit the water. Now we're in a really good zone here because we're just a nice distance out from the shore in a good depth of water. I oh, know, Roger, I'm gonna go right over the top of you, over the back, but- You want me should... to walk down No, there? no, no, you stay put, I'll be over the top. Over in the shallows over there, yes, that's where I wanna be. Okay, I'll go over here. It's 
it's always exciting when you get a good, good hit. Especially if it's miles out. But if you're, um, if you haven't done much soft plastic fishing and you're just starting, you can see by watching Laurie and I, we're not getting a fish every single cast. Um, now sometimes when you're soft plastic fishing, you get a lot more action than others. But a lot of the time is searching for the fish and trying different, uh, casting into different zones in the water. That's the, rea the reality of it. I mean, it's a lot of fun and you can catch some fantastic fish. I've caught lots of fish on plastics. I really enjoy it. But I also enjoy the part of the strategy of thinking where the fish might be and trying casting in different spots. Because then when you catch a good fish, it's a good reward. Wasn't too far further in we got those ones this morning. Oh, oh. There you go. Now, that's not a flathead. That fish really whacked it quite hard. I would estimate that it's probably a small, undersized snapper. They hit really hard. On the hey, plastics. you jump. I mean, I could be wrong, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to lift it up. That's exactly what it is. You see, it's a small baby snapper. Ouch. Very good, Roger. I'm just going to hold it up so you can see it. You can see the colours of that fish. It's beautiful. So it's nailed that little mullet-like um, soft plastic. You can see it's hooked in the, the front of the jaw there. The plastic's actually gone. It hit it pretty violently. Um, I've caught plenty of good sized snapper on plastics. You don't always catch little ones like this. Although I have found that See, we're fishing mid-afternoon, but I've found just before dark is the time you catch the good ones. Nice yeah. flathead, Rog. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wrecked that one, did he? Yeah, it's, it's not even there, it's gone. Yeah. Well, that is one of the downsides of another species attacking what you're going for. They can smash the plastic to bits. I mean, I mean if you catch a decent sized snapper, I mean, that's good, it's not bad. I mean, oh, yeah. You're fishing for flathead, you're happy to catch other good quality fish as well. It's not a problem. But I mean, that shows you there, just employing that method, I've caught a, a small snapper. They seem to like these little baby minnows, the brim and the snapper. They do. Look at this, Laurie. It's not that deep there. But I know. Oh, I can... oh, man. Something else whacked it then. I was just watching my um, lure go down. Oh, I've got one now. Oh, yep. Got another fish. Another How's one. that? Two casts in a row. Beauty. This one's got a little bit of weight in it, and it could be a flathead. Okay, Loz, I might need the net. Oh, no worries. No, actually, I, I, don't know if, I don't know if it is a flathead. It's kind of... Well, I'm right here. Look, it's going sideways. No, it's silver. It's not a flathead. So it's another brim or something. He's around here. Yeah, he's come underneath the back of the okay. boat here. I'm coming over here. Uh, Ready? I might not be worthy of the net, but he's just pulling that hard. That looks like a trevally. On this light tackle, they just pull hard. Carrying on like a trevally. It's just a brim. Oh, it's a nice brim. Oh, it's not big enough to eat though, Loz. There we go. So, um... All right, I mean, he's, he's getting close. You can see, um, oops. You can see that, pl that plastic out the side of his mouth. Actually, I think he is big enough to eat, Loz. Yeah. I reckon so. Yeah, I can tell, 10, 20, he's about That's, 27. Yeah, at least. Yeah. He's all right, if so you want there to keep you go. it. I mean, he fought well. Um, a bycatch when fishing for the flathead. But lots of fun. How's that two casts in a row, Loz? I've got one. Oh, ouch, ouch. It's very good. I think he's annihilated those. Those little plastics, they, they, they fall apart, those little plastics. Well, one fish per plastic. I guess it's worth it. Oh, so 10 or $11 a packet of, say, five or six. So a couple of dollars each. You wouldn't buy the fish for two dollars. So yeah, it's worth doing. So I'm just gonna idle forward literally only about five meters or so just to get, because we're really close to the shore here. 
Um, and we can see the bottom very easily. So just gonna go, really not far at all, Laurie. Just gonna just go a fraction that way. So once again, you can see we're really close to shore where we are. It's just gonna go out a little bit more. So as I briefly mentioned before, I'm using my boat today, but you can do just the same things from the shore. You can see how close we are to the shore. Whether you're in a boat or you're fishing from the shore, it is a matter of moving around with this type of fishing and covering an area. So where do you want to cast loss? Oh, in the water, Roger. In the water? <laughs> yeah, I'll that. go I've got, I've got, right across the bay there and drag it right the way back. I've got two brim type fish in the last, oh, oh, I had a bite at the end then. Yeah, they seem uh, to love that lure. Man, they're whacking it. Not a problem there, the brim are loving that. I don't if they're big if they're legal size. Come on, Flavies, where are you? We're going to get one any minute. Oh, I think I had another fish on then, but it, I just lifted it up and there was something there. I'm just going to check my lure and see if it's still all right. Yeah, it's okay, all right, beautiful. Going to put some scent on that? Yeah, probably should. Um, I actually didn't put any scent on this one, so I probably should. I'll see how you go without it. Have one cast without, one cast with, see what happens. I just know, I know I'm itching, Laurie. I know we're just going to get a couple of flathead any minute now. That's the plan. Oh, there, there you, you go, go, another fish. No, it's not big again. It's like these little, these brim and these little snapper are loving this little minnow. I'm just pulling him in pretty quickly because I want to get him back in the water and get my line back out there again. See, this one's just another small snapper. Smaller than the last one, ouch, actually. But they're really loving this little minnow, so I'll let him go. And, um, chuck this, man, they, they, they're nailing that, aren't they? They are, they like that. What's minnow. that one called again? Uh, it's just called a minnow, actually. Um, and it's in smelt, I think, is the colour. Okay. I might race out my ten of them. I've got about three packets here with me in the boat, Laurie. Okay, well, you might need them by the end of, end of tonight. <laughs> They're getting oh, nailed. Look at this. That's got more weight in it. Look. That's a flatty. <laughs> here we go. Here we so go. It's got a little bit more weight in it. This is more like it. I think we might need the net this time. We've got a flathead here. Yeah, I think so, Laurie. Uh, look, he's going past the boat. Look. Oh, my gosh. This is a nice flathead. My goodness. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's not. Earth? No, it's actually going in round in circles. What the heck? Flathead don't do that. It's going it's around. hanging down. He's hanging down deep and going around in circles. Oh, it's silver. Is that a trevally? It could what well be. I think it could be a trevally. I actually. think it's a trevally. Oh wow. He's not huge, Loz, but on this light gear they um they certainly fight on this light gear. Well, I'll see if we can get him up a bit further, and I'll see if I can. Yeah, he's coming up now, Laurie. He's going here yeah, as the, the trevally typically do, going around in circles. Yes, and it is. You can see him there, that silver, silver colour of the fish. There he comes. Okay, so these little minis, min, minis. <laughs> these little minnows, Laurie, have got three different species now. Yes. So I think. Um, He's not big enough to keep. You can see the um, soft plastic there on that fish. So, I mean, this is, even though we're not catching flathead yet, we're having fun. Let him go. Uh, I need to replace this one again, I think. He's um, had the Harold. The rod that I'm using is um, a one to three kilo rated rod. It's approximately six foot long. And I have on this real eight pound braid. And I have a, um, I've got eight pound braid and I've got eight pound fluorocarbon leader. So it's all the same uh, breaking strain. Oh, another fish. Oh, got off. <laughs> well, there you go. Very successful little lure, that. I'm just going to, um, Flick out there. I think that was a flathead. That one felt like a flathead. 
I wouldn't mind doing this drift again, but a little bit further out. Oh, man, I'm getting bites. Oh, you're right next to the boat. I was. Yep, they grab the tail and give it a good stretch. Okay, let's send it back out. Okay, so I'm just going to check my plastic to make sure he's not dead. Because sometimes they get torn up and ripped up and they don't sit properly on the hook, but still looks all right. I still have a lot of anticipation here, Laurie. Oh, it's happening. Oh, I like it when you're getting lots of action like that. Oh, I got a fish. Okay. I think this could be a flathead, Laurie. We might need the net, maybe. Okay. What's he doing? What have we got here? Can't, yep, it is a flathead, I can see. Okay. So this time it's a flathead, ha ha. <laughs> Not a huge one, but that little minnow's done it again. So this guy that we've caught here, I'll just lift him up. You can see, oops, there you go. You can see there's that, that minnow again that I was using. It's done the job. This flathead is approximately it's about a legal size. It's about probably close to 40 centimetres. What you want. The legal length for flathead in New South Wales is 36 centimetres. That one's well and truly over 36 centimetres and they're beautiful to eat the little flathead tails at that size. So it's taken a, not that long to get a flathead. We've been catching a few other fish, but we got one and I'm sure we'll get some more. <laughs> so I reckon we just go forward a little bit, Loz, and we just continue this drift that way. Up. Okay, it's straight out from the shore then? Yeah, I'll tell I'll you when to stop. I'll back up a little bit. I'll go back up there a little bit. Because this wind is going to push us straight back in. Okay, let's um, get it back out there. It's great being able to flick your plastics with these little light rods because you can really get a lovely action. You wouldn't be able to do that if you had a stiff, a short, stiff fishing rod. It would be useless. It'd be really hard to cast. Oh, might I add, the other thing about these rods, one to three kilo, we find is very good, but you might want a two to five or, or one to four or something like that. But what's important is that where the position of the reel is to the handle. General boat rods, bottom fishing rods, the handle's way back here. And you do not want that for this fishing. You want the shortest possible handle, almost like a trout rod. Do you mind? <laughs> now, what Laurie's saying is really important. You do not want a long handle on the rod because it just whacks you. It's just really awkward. Now, I think that this fish is, this fish, look, I'm just going to lift it in. It's flathead number two, but it's not very big. <laughs> she's a small one. So there you go. Um, so he'll be going back. That'll to teach you for interrupting my bit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry mate. <laughs> no worries. I keep a glove in the boat for holding flathead. This is actually a diver's glove but they really come in handy when you want to hold a flathead and try and get a hook out because they, they're very spiky. So I'm just going to keep the, the pressure on this guy and get my... There you go, I got the plastic out. Still in good condition. Whoops, man he's a very slippery customer. Yeah, so I'm going to actually Grab him. Oh, come on. There you go. And I'm sure he'll be happy to swim away. Oh, yep. There you go. Happy as Larry. Okay, now. Okay, well, haven't had any big ones yet. But that could happen at any moment. So, uh, what pound braid do you like using, Rog? What, what pound braid? Oops. What pound braid do I like using? For this type of fishing? As a general weight is eight pound. Okay. You could go to six pound, but eight pound is gonna... Um... You land a lot of fish on eight pound. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're, we're, um, we're fishing and making this video and it's really quite early in the afternoon. 
it's probably at least another three hours before dark. So we are actually not even fishing the premium time. If we were really serious, we'd come out about maybe an hour and a half, two hours before dark, or early in the morning. Oh, what happened there? Man, I'm getting so, many, so much action. Um, so we're not even fishing at the best time of the day, but we're getting quite a few bites. It's more just to explain the basic fundamentals of how to do it. this type of fishing works. And I actually have a, a fishing t Zoom teaching tonight. So that's one of the reasons I'm not out fishing just before dark because I do Zoom trainings fortnightly for Rogers Fishing members. My website, rogersfishing.com, um, we have an online community. It's like an online fishing club. And I've created a number of fishing courses that are only available on my website. And we have a fortnightly Zoom training where I teach on different subjects every fortnight. And we have a QA and a and everyone pitches in and asks questions. It's really good. So if you'd like to meet other fishermen who are happy to share what they know and improve your fishing, you might want to consider joining my Rogers Fishing membership. Okay, I'm just... I was getting a few bites then. Obviously wasn't hooking up. Um, so I'm kind of trying to concentrate on my lure. Now we're near the shore again, Loz, so... Alrighty, let's move. I'm cast over the back there. You happy to wire that in while I putt I out? I reckon we should putt back out there again and, and just work our way along here. I can do that. Okay, go. Oh, I had him on, but he got off. Whatever that was. Always checking my plastic to make sure that it's not torn or ripped up. So all of the fish I've caught so far in this session has just been on this one little baby minnow. Alrighty. And all the fish I haven't caught have been on this one. Well, you're just waiting, Laurie. You're just waiting for the big one. Oh yeah. Noticeably bigger lure, hopefully bigger fish. However, little fish will take big lures as well. Just gotta be patient. Oh, I got a fish. Got another one. Cool. Okay. All right. What have we got this time? Staying down, I is it? I think it's a flathead, actually. Yeah, it'd be flatty. Staying down. Yeah, it's doing the flathead thing. Got any power to it? Uh, he's got a little bit of a little bit of oomph. I think he's certainly big enough big enough to keep, probably. Okay, so I'll bring him up, Loz. Oh yeah. See him? Yep. Here he comes. Cool. You're very good with that net, Laurie. Wow. <laughs> you flip it out like a flapjack. Yeah. Okay, so how big, how big is that, Laurie? That, I reckon, would be... 38? 10, 20... 37, 38, yes. It's about 38. At least. Alrighty. We can add him to the tally. Nice colours, aren't they? They're real, a real ambush flavour. They got like. Yeah, the, I mean the colour of the bottom here in the lake would be very similar to what you're seeing there. Sand and rocks, yeah. speckly. Okay. We're waiting for that. Oh, Laurie's got one. Finally. What do you think, Laurie? What do you think? Oh, it's a flatty, definitely. Yeah, I can see it's a flathead. Yeah, I'll get the net. <coughs> They're in, they're in close on this, this corner. Yeah. Oh, he's going for a run. I'll bring him back up again. Bring him head first, matey. There we go. Hey, it's up. Yep, there he is. Oh, I've got to let you grab him. a little bit oh, bigger. Yeah, than, a little bit a little bigger. bigger. Oh, look at that. Look oh. at that. Self-release. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit bigger. Watch out for your toes, mate. Yeah, he's, a, and he's about a 40. Bigger lure, bigger fish, however. I want to get a bigger one. We want a bigger one. Bigger one. <laughs> Not a bad start. Okay. Okay. These are the dangerous bits right here. Those two spikes. You can see that little cut on my finger. That was the other day. It just went flick and it got me and 
They like to bleed a lot, but they're very, very sharp. Be mindful of those. Keep your fingers well away from that. I, I've got another one. I've got another one over here. Oh, that was a big fish. I really felt the, I really felt the weight of that fish. I hooked it, and it was really solid. He had it, and he spat it, right? Yeah, he spat it, yeah. That's, that's indicative of the big one. Yeah. It's straight back where you were, and you'll go it again. Where were you? Straight out the back there like that. Okay. Oh, I would like to have seen him. Maybe we will. I just felt that heavy... <laughs> Now we don't want to get any closer to this guy. Poaching his fish. Well, we've kind of just been easing our way along very quietly. We're not kind of, um, you know, encroaching too much. We better move as we get close enough. What we could do, oh, I've got one. Yeah, got another fish. What have I got this time? Oh, look at that. Baby. It's another baby flathead. Man, they're all different, all sizes here. Big ones, little ones. But they all go for it. Yeah, they do. So we started off with mainly Bremen, Snapper and Trevally, but now we've caught six flathead in the last 20 minutes. They seem to be concentrating from here on. You know, they might be from here on around the point. We'll just keep going the way we're going. But you know, that's a good lesson from what we've been teaching in this video about moving along and trying different places because we're catching all those other fish but we've just hit a patch yes. where we're catching flathead. Now I'm going to move out of the way, there's a guy on the shore. All right, let's move Laurie. Yep, let's move. So we seem to think there's a couple of big, big fish underneath us so we're going to move the boat that way 30-40 feet and throw back this way See if we can find them. See, I'm going nice and very sneaky. <laughs> okay, now as I say, we came over here, we'll throw back over that way. Uh, it's probably not quite as far as I'd like to have gone, but anyway, we'll see what happens. Now, I caught a tailor off the beach last night and I've kept it for bait. Just taken a bit of a, the flesh off it. And while we're fishing with the plastics, I'm going to just let this drag along the bottom behind us as we're drifting along. Because um, sometimes you can catch some good fish doing that. I mean, whether it be a flathead or something else. I'll chuck, that, I'll chuck him out of the way. Up behind us, like that. I'll set the drag on that. And, um... <coughs> anything could happen with that thing. <laughs> so... Now we're drifting towards this guy, so I'm just mindful of that, Oz. Yeah. Okay, so here's another, here's another handy tip. When you've just caught a fish and you take the lure out of the fish, you must check the knot and the first couple of inches of line because chances are the flathead would have abraded the line here. Don't just throw it back in and wanting to get that next fish. You must cut it and retie it so that there's no more abraded line at the, at the very beginning because the chances are you'll hook one that's bigger than the last one and because you didn't pay attention to the condition of the line down near the hook it'll snap on you and you'll lose a fish of a lifetime so religiously you catch a fish cut it retie it do it again yes you might have to change your leader two or three times in a session but it's worth doing so we've just moved um there was a gentleman fishing on the shore so we've um kind of skirted around him. Uh, we were getting a few flathead in that spot, so I would like to have actually given it a little bit more time there, but I don't want to do, I don't want to do that and get too close to that other guy. So we just moved, moved to a different spot. Just a bit further along the shore. Once again, we're just working our way along the edge, not far out from shore. And hopefully we can find some fish down here. I've got it tiny little jig head on this one, it's only a 1 16th, so it'll, oh, okay. it'll sink really slow. So what made you decide to do that? Oh, it's a similar one to what you're using, I just thought I'd give that a try. Similar size. I'm thinking I might just idle about 5 or 10 feet closer to shore. Yeah, we're a bit far out here. Just a fraction too far out. I want to fish along that edge. If we don't get any bites here in like, I'm only going to give it five minutes or so. Mm -hmm. 
and then we're going to go back up the other end of the point and drift back along that shore. Oh, I've got a fish. Yep. All right, not very big, but it's a fish though. It is. Oh, yeah, look at it. <laughs> it's amazing. Light bait. <laughs> look at that tiny little thing that took the soft plastic. You can see, oh, actually, it's just, it's been hooked underneath, but yeah, it's just a tiny little fish. It's a tarwine, actually. So we're going to move position again right. for our final, um, final go. So we've had a quick little go here, having been getting as many bites, so we're just going to go and try another spot. Just going to, not too far from where we are. Actually, the wind has dropped down quite nicely, hasn't it, Laurie? It's nice now. So Manoeuvring into position. Always estimating how deep the water is, how close we are to the shore, that we're kind of in that drop-off zone where it starts going from shallow to deep. All those fish were in really shallow, weren't they? They were pretty shallow. So I think we're, we're good here. This bit of tailor which I've got on, I'm going to say, see you later, Mr. Taylor. Chuck him over the back. Alrighty. It's not that deep here. Oh, Loza, you're on, mate. Yep. Beauty. Is it going to need a net? No, this isn't a flatter. This is something else. Yeah. It just went tap, tap, and I went wax. And I think I might have foul hooked whatever it is. But it's not. not really I don't, I don't much, think it's a flatty. Off. It is a flathead. It is. You're kidding me. Right. And he swallowed it. He swallowed it whole and it, and it was on the surface. It wasn't even halfway down. This little guts here completely swallowed a 140 mil lure. Yeah, oh, there you go. It spat it out. Bingo. You greedy little fella. Oi. Okay, let's put the glove on. Oh, I'm dangerously close to those spikes. All right, uh, you want to watch this? Here we go. There he goes, down that way. <laughs> now this is what I was talking about before. You can see the line just here, it's been frayed up by the teeth of the flatty. So many of you will just say, oh no, that'll be right and throw it out. Then you get the fish of a lifetime and that's already half worn out. So don't do it. Cut it off and retie it. Oh. What was that? that... <laughs> mate, mate, that was nuts. The grab went like this and... <laughs> Mate, they must be brim. Those are the reddies that were here before. Yeah. Just down that direction, basically, down the alleyway. You know what I like about this fishing rod? No. It's clean. It's clean? Yep. No bait, no blood and guts all over your fingers, no sand. It's just clean. Even my, life, my wife likes this. In actual fact, she's very, very good at it. Yeah, no, she's actually become a real soft plastics guru. Yeah, she's quite... It's got the touch, it's got the finesse. Up oh, there you go, look at that. The tail's been hooked and caught up on its own hook. Just like that. So you gotta get that off there because that won't work like that. All right. So that normally happens when you get brim and other species, grab it and give it a stretch. So for all those ladies out there that think they might like to try the hand at fishing, this type of fishing, soft plastic for flathead, I highly recommend it for you guys because it's clean, it's fun. And when you get addicted to that strike, you know, flathead, $70 a kilo, it's good fun and it's worth doing. And I'm sure your husband will buy you as much tackle as you like. <laughs> okay, I've got a fish. Oh, it got off. Oh, I felt the weight of it. It was yep. a flathead. Yeah, big one out wide, huh? Yeah. Go again, Rod, you'll still be there. I've had them do that and they'll, they'll just get the feel of it and the next time it goes past, I'll nail it. Yeah, definitely um, really didn't budge him very far off the bottom. No. Nah. I got, uh, no, my Lewis, oh my, you're kidding me. <laughs> I gotta have a look That's, at this. That fish is not even as big as the lure. He's come to have a look at it and he's got hooked in the belly. Look at that. <laughs> All does. Okay, hook something. 
it's a fish, I know that much. What is it? A bit of weight in it? A little bit. Sometimes they're a bit deceptive. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay. Yeah, he's pulling a little bit more now. Grab the net. Yeah. Sometimes they don't fight so hard at first. No. Like this guy is giving me a little bit, a little bit more curry now. Yeah. Now that it's near the boat, it's just going to be a little bit easy with it. It's a nice flathead. Yes, it is. Yeah. Come on, fella. I know. Raise his head. Okay, I'm going to bring him over towards you, Laurie. I'll Not be ready. huge, but he, he's a nice eating fish, though. Okay. Here he comes. <laughs> he didn't want to. Um... There you go. Another lovely table fish. Certainly. He swallowed it, Laurie. He did. Look at that. He's, he's nailed that soft plastic. Yes, he did. Oh, there you go. Popped out. All right. Well, that was easy. Well, um, we've actually, you know, we could keep fishing, but we have um, appointments that we need to go to. So, darn it. <laughs> I would just love to stay out here till dark. I'm sure it'll heat up. It's you only know, six o'clock be... now. I reckon this is oh. now is when we should have got oh, here. Yeah, I mean, like it'd be fantastic. Staying out here till dark would be so good, Laurie. Oh yeah. So that fish, that, that one's a bit. That one's that one's over 40. He's about 42. You see that there? That's 36 right there. Oh, you've made a few marks on your rod. Okay. If we go like that, from there to there is 36. That's 50. So he is. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He'd be 42, 43. Okay. Yeah, that's legal. So he's at least six or seven centimetres past legal. We're happy with that. We've, um, I think we've actually ended up landing about 10 flathead, Laurie. Thanks so much for watching. We've had a great time, haven't we, Laurie? Absolutely. Plenty of fish there. Yeah. Plenty of... Mate, you brain those brim at first with that little... Little, little minnow thing, oh, yeah. Gosh. All right, we'll see you very soon in the next video.